Hey you guys, good evening and welcome to my exciting channel where the fun never ends with Mandela Effects. Welcome all Mandela Effect things to my channel. Hey guys, so I want to talk to you about a big one I found today. Big Mandela Effect. I, this one ticks me the heck off because I buy ballpark Angus beef franks all the time. Alright, I'm talking about, we had some just, re just as recently as New Year's Day. And these were not like this. Look, I, I, I say these just for you guys. Look at this. I found this today. The A and the N are merged. You guys see that? I'm not sure if you guys can see that close up enough. There you go. Uh, I'm going to be tracing these logos uh, right now, in fact. Um, but yeah, Ballpark Angus, they have they have messed with our hot dogs. Look at this, guys. Um, go back and look at the old logos from as far back as 2013, and you'll see they're merged, the A and the N. So yeah, let me just trace this Angus part real quick. Bingo. This one should be a, one in the slammer for you guys. Uh, any of you guys who are having trouble talking to people about the effects, just show them these ballpark Anguses. Uh, I'll show them a TV commercial from 2013. You'll see that it's like this in the, in the, uh, in the new reality. Uh, go ahead and tell them about Depends, because Depends does not exist anymore in this reality. It's always been Depend. Uh, I'll trace the ballpark here in a sec. But just to prove that I'm right, look at this TV commercial. Um, August 8th, uh, 2014. Okay. Ballpark Franks are made with 100% Angus and there's Abe Lincoln. And just a dash of democracy. Hmm. So when someone asks you, hey, are you free to eat a great tasting Ballpark Frank this weekend? That's when you say, of course I'm free. I'm an American. Ballpark Franks, so American. You guys see that? The A and the N are freaking merged. Look at that crap. <laughs> I don't know how to explain this, guys, other than it's an effect. Because this wasn't like this a couple weeks ago, I tell you. Oh, and by the way, here's Abe Lincoln with his right foot sticking out forward and his, his left hand balled up in a fist. He's got like a hitchhiker thumb going on here. But yeah, there you have it. Um, yeah, let me trace the ballpark logo itself. Now, I didn't know they made ballpark singles. I'm a little bit new to that. They had the ballpark singles back in the early 2000s and 90s. I don't know if they still do it. Yeah, here, early 2000s through present. This is the logo right here. The L's are not curved. They have like a straight up and down, sort of like, it looks like an M. Like the two L's together look like they point to an M or something. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay, there's a curvy looking six right there. Um, I don't know if this is, this could change too. All these logos are subject to change and even my tracing may change, but the point is to bring it out there to you guys and get it well known. That way, if it does change, you'll spot it the same time I do. Okay. Yeah, there we go. That K looks kind of weird, actually. Um, yeah, I guess the logo hasn't really changed. This one hasn't changed much. And it has the red triangle, like a flag. Sort of the yellow, yellow letters with blue background. Um, another one that's um, pretty big for me was Nathan's. Um, I can tell you right now that the N, the H... And the other N over here are messed up. These were not as pointy. They were more like this left side here of the N. It had a stubby leg. Now it looks like a like a like a fisherman's anchor or something like that. Uh, so yeah, let me trace this one. This one's been like this since 1916. I am calling BS on that one. Uh, the the N also has a notch over here. It just seems, you know what it seems like? It seems like somebody just took the logo and added some thorns to it. That's what it looks like. The A has a thorn or a horn. Uh, at least the left T's there. The H has a somewhat of a thorn there too. I don't know, guys. Uh, all I'm saying is go out there and make your own residue videos if you want. You can send them to me and I'll, put, I'll post them up here. I don't mind helping you guys out getting the word across. Uh, yeah. 
I don't know. There we go. Uh, and it does have an apostrophe, by the way. The apostrophe right there. Indicating possession. These, these actually were my favorite hot dogs sort of growing up. I mean, we always had Nathan's. And they did not look like that from my memory. Um, the other Mandela effect that, uh, that I'm also bringing up in this video is uh, one that uh, Moneybag73, big shout out brother, uh, January 4th, he put out this video. The Mandela effect has brought us the scarab-headed god of Egypt for 2018. So now we have a scarab-headed god in the Egyptian culture. Uh, never have I ever heard of this. Uh, in fact, that's how I'll do it from now on with the Mandela effect. Never have I ever, okay? Uh, there's this Egyptian god, Kepri. Listen to this. Kepri. Kepri, Kepri. Okay. I know Osiris and Set and some of the other ones. I don't claim to know all the Egyptian gods, but I swear to you, it looks like someone just went through <laughs> and threw a scarab on a bunch of Come on, that's Photoshop. That I'm familiar with. Somebody went back there and Photoshopped it. Egyptian stuff for most of my life, as I'm sure a lot of you have, and I've never, ever in my life seen this. I mean, here it is. The scarab beetle god. No. I've never seen no. a scarab beetle never. for the head of one of these Egyptian gods. Never. This is, oh my gosh, this hurts my head. Kepri. K-H-E-P-R-I. So ridiculous! I, are, are you kidding me? I mean, this looks familiar, but it looks like someone just came. And by the way, um, his video got 256 thumbs up, uh, only seven thumbs down. Um, that's that's huge, guys. This is a huge effect. Uh, go ahead and look it up yourself. Scarab Egyptian god. Uh, and and why is he holding ox? These uh these things of life here. No. No. Osiris and, and, and uh, some of the other gods had these. I don't remember Kepri, though. This is so weird, you guys. Um, but if you look at many of these pictures... No, 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 no. They did not have eagle wings like that. No. I remember this picture with the boat. This was, this was more like an eagle or a, or a vulture. Look at this. Actually, here's the here's the vulture guy right here. But no, this was not like this. This was like an eagle or something. No. What is going on here, you guys? And yet we have Kepri. Oh my goodness! I need to speak to someone who knows Egyptian that has been away from it for a while because when you're in it, you see all the new stuff and you and you you receive the upgrade. Uh. Okay, so here, here's what I found. The religious significance. Okay, uh, Wikipedia. In ancient Egyptian religion, the sun god Ra. Remember, we've been talking about Ra. All these letters merging. They, they kind of point to Ra, the sun god. Is seen to roll across the sky every day, transforming bodies and souls. Beetles of the Scarabidae family, the dung beetle, roll dung into a ball as food. And as a brood chamber in which they lay eggs, this way the larvae hatch and immediately surrounded by food. For these reasons, the scarab was seen as a symbol of this heavenly cycle and, and of the idea of rebirth and regeneration. Oh my god. Yeah, they're talking about rebirth and regeneration here. The Egyptian god Kepri, Ra as the rising sun, was often depicted as a scarab beetle or as a scarab beetle-headed man. The ancient Egyptians believed that Kepri renewed the sun every day before rolling it above the horizon, then carried it through the other world after sunset, only to renew it again. No. No. A golden scarab of, of Nefertiti uh, was discovered in the in a wreck. No. No, I, no. I remember, this is what I remember. I remember uh, um, there was the, the, the moon. Uh, I think it was... Uh, this it was uh it was Thoth. Thoth had something to do with it. Um Thoth used his magic, this this god here, to help heal the sun. No. 
Thoth was a god who overcame the curse of... No! I don't remember that, no. All right. Yeah, but there, there, the, um, let me tell you, the Freemasons believe, this is what they believe. This is what I've heard. They found this emerald on the moon, this green gem that has great magic to it. And uh, it, it's called the Tablet of Thoth. Let me see if I can find it. Let me, s come on. Tablet of Thoth. If you don't believe me, look at it. It's a, it's a green emerald. Yeah, here it is. The Tablet of Thoth. Uh, uh, Thoth the Atlantean. See? Alright. So there's the proof for Thoth. But I remember he used his magic. I, I thought it was to heal Ra's... Uh, to heal the sun so that it comes back again and 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 it was he was like of the moon or something no this is totally messing up whoops ah oh, i just had that link ah oh, man okay well here here is the egyptian gods according to this rick uh rickordian.com he says meet the egyptian gods right nowhere on here do i see Kepri. Do you guys see Kepri? No. Kepri is not here. There's Horus. Horus is the Avenger. Horus was the son of Isis and Osiris. When he grew to manhood, he challenged Set and eventually defeated him, becoming the new pharaoh of Egypt. Afterwards, all mortal pharaohs considered themselves to be descendants of Horus. Horus's symbol was the falcon. And he is often de depicted uh, with a man with a falcon's head. Uh, okay. See, this could be new changes. I, I don't remember that, but okay. Uh, Ra, the god of the sun. Ra was the first pharaoh of the world back in the days when gods inhabited Egypt. Each day Ra's golden sunship would sail across the sky, and each night it would travel through the underworld or the underground world of the Duat sailing the river of darkness and fighting off monsters. The Egyptians celebrated each sunrise when Ra emerged victorious again and caused a new day to begin. Uh, after many centuries, Ra became old and senile, and senile and retreated into the heavens, giving up his throne to Osiris. Whoa. That's crazy. Oh my goodness. All right. Uh... There was something I was going to share with you guys, uh, but that link disappeared. I'll see if I can get it back, maybe through my history or something. Um, oh, gosh. Okay. Well, you, you get the idea, folks. Um, this other god did not exist, in, not in my book, and many other people are not remembering Kepri either. Um... All right, guys, well, here's to hanging on to our memories. Um, I think, if I remember correctly, uh, the link was, uh, gosh. Let's see, the scarab beetle itself. Let me see. I found a link about it. Hold on, if I could find it again. Oh, I know what it was now. I remember. Okay. Um, Kefir, God of the Sun, Creation, Life, and Resurrection. Kefir. This this site says Kef Kefir. The, this may be residue. Ke yeah, they're they're saying it's Kepri. This one's Ke Kefir, the god of the sun, creation, life, and resurrection. Uh, okay, Kepri, yeah, it, it could be either one. Kefir or Kepri was the Egyptian patron god of the sun, creation, life, and resurrection. The god appears, yeah, so, gosh, um, it means scarab. Goodness gracious, yeah, we would have heard about this somewhere, I think. That's how I feel. And look at all these pyramids. There's one, two, three, four, five, six pyramids right there in Egypt. What's up with that? Six pyramids. 
by the Great Pyramids. I remember three. And uh, where uh, Kepri uh, is actually a. Uh, if you guys play Magic the Gathering, uh, it comes up on Magic the Gathering. Where is it? The. Uh, No, I just saw it. Kepri the Dawnbringer. What? Uh, I don't know, you guys. Um, but I remember seeing it on MTG. We'll just say Scarab, Egyptian God. Um... MTG. How about that? Where is it? Okay. Um, the Locust God. Oh my goodness. Okay, it was this dude right here. Where's that image? This guy right here. Ah, come on, show me the English one. Come on, show me the English. What's his name? The Scarab God. Okay. All right. This is, um, if you look at the name of the card, it says the Scarab God. This is from magicthegathering.shoptcgplayer.com. Uh, the Scarab God is the it is hour of devastation. Let's see. Golly, um, hour of devastation is is apparently it's part of the uh, MTG group. Okay, it's from. Hmm. Okay, but these let me tell you these Scarab. Uh, scarab beetles, they have to do with mummies. Mummies. They, they guard, uh, on Wikipedia, it did say they guard mummies. Let me see. Okay, right here. Let me get rid of that crazy alarm, okay? Okay, I'm back. Alright, so, check it out. These, um, okay, this section here on funerary scarabs, although scarab amulets were sometimes placed in tombs as part of the deceased's personal effects or as jewelry, generally they have no particular association with ancient Egyptian funerary rites. There are, however, three types of specifically um, funerary scarabs, heart scarabs, pectoral scarabs, and naturalistic scarabs. Um, so check this out. The Book of the Dead. Okay, let me let me just put put it right here. Okay, okay. Um, the base of a heart scarab was usually carved either directly or on a gold plate fixed to the base with hieroglyphs which name the deceased and repeat some or all spell repeat from the Book of the Dead. Okay, this is the Book of Egyptian Book of the Dead. The spell commands the deceased heart typically left in the mummy's chest cavity. Or, uh, unlike other viscera, viscera. So, um, in other words, they left the heart. No. I don't remember the, them leaving the, the heart inside the mummy, do you? Uh, not to give evidence against the deceased. When the deceased is being judged by the gods of the underworld, it is often suggested that the heart is being commanded not to give false evidence, but the opposite may be true. The Book of the Dead requires the heart scarab to be made of green nemahef stone. Look at that, a green stone. What is up with this green? Green has to do with, I guess, rebirth, resurrection. Uh, let's see, but a variety of green or dark colored stones were used. Look at this. Uh, heart scarabs were often hung around the mummy's neck with a gold wire, and the scarab itself was held in a gold frame. 
Interesting stuff, man. Um, I have to tell you, do, do your research on the Egyptian, because uh, we are living in uh, the, the, the day and age of Sodom and Egypt. Um, and I know I've read that part many times in the in the uh, in the in Revelations or Revelation, whichever one it is for you. I, I remember Revelations, um, but if you look, there's a part that says Sodom and Egypt. Let me just uh, read that for you real quick. I might, I might as well instead of just referencing it. Okay, Revelations eleven eight or Revelation eleven eight. It says uh, these are different translations. Let's find the King James. Okay, and their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. I know that that part I don't get. Um, Sodom and Sodom and Egypt, I guess. Um, see, you guys know the Lord was crucified at Golgotha. If you know your Bible, you know that it was the place of the skull. Okay? Well, anyway, guys, I uh, hope you have a great Mandela Effect night, and God bless. Hope, hope you found some of this information to be informative. Um, do your own research, um, you know, your own truth searching, okay? And we hope to see you on tomorrow night's show. I'm